Hello, my name is John Sims with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to configure centralized survivable extensions for the Avaya B5800 branch gateway. Just a few notables before we start our configuration is that starting with the Avaya Aura System Manager and Session Manager 6.1 Service Pack 2, we added a new SIP entity type called Survivability Server. This will influence the port and protocol decision used by the Avaya 96XX and 96X1 SIP endpoints during rainy day failover events. What this means to us in configuration is, as we set the B5800 entity link to make use of TCP5060, that will have a direct influence on the PPM model push to the endpoints on how these endpoints will fail over to the B5800 as its survivability server option. And the last configuration notable is that in B5800 R6.1, TLS is not supported and TCP is the only protocol option of choice. Okay, we're going to start off at the Avaya System Manager landing page. We're going to head to User Management under the User section and we're going to click on manage users our goal here is to add a new centralized user on system manager so we'll click new that's using a dial plan of CM CM influenced CM provided dial plan so we'll enter the last name in this case of cashier first name front as you see I'll start filling in description login name this login name is required even though we typically are not giving um, users access generally to log into the system manager to manage their profile and there's a password that we have to enter so again a lot of um, if you see the asterisk there you see it's a required field and I'm just being complete here and thorough adding in displays time zones and then we'll proceed to the next part of the configuration under communication profile so under communication profile the first part is we're going to enter in the profile password which is very important it's the endpoint password which we will be syncing up with a field on the B5800 itself so now we're adding communication addressing for system manager for this account for this endpoint user the right of via SIP which is seven digit private canonical address for the with under the proper domain and then as you see here I'm going to add in a full 12 digit proper E164 address again under the proper domain and select add now it's time to set the session manager part of the user profile so primary session manager is set secondary session manager does not exist so we'll leave that at none we'll add in the originating and the termination app sequencer which will be CM in this case and an important part here is to add in the survivability server of the B1500 that this user will exist on with that same location that's also been set for the B1500 under endpoint profile we're going to make use of the CM dial plan seven digit private canonical address with a SIP template of a 9640 SIP template enter a security code IP which will be converted to a SIP address and then the voicemail pilot number for the endpoint and then a little bit of good housekeeping there is to be able to unassign the endpoint if the user is deleted messaging profile of course is optional but I'll run through it where we pick the modular messaging server we pick the subscriber mailbox number a default template, add a password, and again good housekeeping measure to delete the subscriber upon deletion in System Manager and we'll hit commit to our entries. So System Manager will now process this these forms and as you see from a System Manager based status if we click on status we see that the user was created successfully so our job here is complete on the system manager side to create a centralized user. So now it's time to configure the centralized user on the B1500. So we head to the extension 
part of the configuration tree and we notice that we're in four digit dial plan on the B5800 we're going to add a new SIP extension and with that SIP extension we're going to actually this is a um, hardware assigned extension ID we're going to now assign the base extension address and give it the enterprise seven digit full canonical or I should say private canonical address we'll now select centralized which will give us a DDI or DID matrix table which we'll be filling in this will give us short form dialing capabilities when in rainy day mode so we'll enter the short form number the last four digits of the extension and then we'll enter in the full DID that we can target on the system for the centralized user again in rainy day mode in 6.1 that matrix table is for rainy day targeting operation. You see that we've created a VoIP centralized SIP extension. Something to point out quickly if we add another extension, you'll see that again the system assigns the extension ID, which is a hardware address. So now it's time to head to the user form, and now we're going to start to add a survivable user on this system matched up with what was just created in system manager as a centralized user so we're giving it the same name the front cashier branch 908 this is not where we sync up our communication profile password just want to point that out we'll do that in a minute then we'll add the extension the seven digit private canonical extension again that we set in system manager for CM for that centralized user so now we head to the telephony tab of the user under supervisor settings. This is where we marry up and match the communication profile password that was previously set on system manager. This is where when the failover event occurs and the endpoint has to then register in survivable mode to the B5800, the code that was then used and pushed by PPM will match here on the B1500 system and allow registration event to occur on the B1500 system. And as always we click OK to finalize the form. So a quick discussion here we'll go back to the extension part of the configuration tree and look at this survivable extension again. It's set to centralized. It has a DDI table. It exists on this system with a survivable license. We're now checking into the PLDS part of the configuration tree and see that we have an appropriate PLDS license for this user. It is only targetable on this system when a failover event has occurred and this endpoint has then registered with the B1500 system, consuming then one survivable station endpoint license on the B1500. So one completion step here is to actually go to the main hunt group that normally exists on the system or any hunt group you want to add this centralized user to. So you see here I'm going to go through the process, the steps of adding in this centralized user to this local hunt group. Now again, this user is not targetable on the B1500 system until a failover event has occurred, which case the survivable SIP station will register with the B5800 and become a local target to the B5800. You see here I'm trying to leave the form without clicking OK. Again, if you look at the centralized DDI table, you see that this extension is targetable both as short form dial 4074 and through incoming call route purpose um, incoming trunks through the full DID address. Again, those addresses are targetable when the failover event has occurred and this SIP endpoint has now registered on the B1500 system. So we're finished with our configuration steps on the B1500, so we'll save up this configuration. As you see, I hit the save icon on the toolbar. It'll be an immediate reboot required after the merge is complete. We'll add the proper account and password authentication and send the change up to the B5800. As always, if you need more information about implementing or configuring the Avaya B5800 branch gateway, please visit us on support.avaya.com where we have the implementation guide posted. Also for your reference is a link to the Avaya or Session Manager 6.1 Service Pack 2 release notes, which again includes the new SIP entity type for non-survivable 
remote branch servers. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.